Looks like we started. Uh, Mike Gershow, eldest son of the painter, artist, Gunther Gershow. Um, I'm doing this talk to describe or explain what a Gunther Gershow print is. For people in the art world, this is probably, well, it, I'm sure it's uh, really obvious, but, but I've come across people who don't quite understand what these things are. Um, and, you know, that's for people who are studying about prints or about Gunther Gershow and or other people who are interested in getting one or, or you know, as a, as a gift or buying one or, or inheriting one or whatever. Okay, so that's just to help explain uh, what that's about. So what is a Gunther Gershow print? One way to think about it, maybe slightly bizarre, but it's, you know, you, we come across this kind of stuff all the time, you know, like a craft beer, the limited production thing, okay? Or small batches of ice cream, you know, they call them art, or craft, craft made ice cream or cookies or whatever. And a print in this context is basically that. It's a, it's a craft print. Uh, it's not like other prints. And in the art world, this is common, um, or has been common. It is common, has been common for many years. Anyway, so what types of uh, prints that Gershow do? Uh, well, he did lithographies, uh, lithographs, sorry, uh, uh, silk screens, etching, and mixographias. And um, those, he, he did a hundred, a hundred, uh, what they call additions. So, you know, going back to the craft beer or a small batch ice cream. So each batch is called an addition, right? And usually they only make one batch per design or creation, right? And it doesn't matter if it's a lithograph or the other things. Okay, now I'm not gonna go into the details of what lithographs and silk screens and, and etchings are. You can look this up on, you know, uh, Google, there's tons of stuff out there. YouTube people um, have, I'm sure, made stuff to, to describe um, all these techniques. Okay, so how does this differ from other kinds of prints? Um, well, you you know, everybody sees these other kinds of prints all the time, basically starting with your computer printer or, you know, or you go to a, a place to do copies like a Xerox or Canon copier, which are not copiers so much anymore as printers because they connect them up to it. And in those type of printing, it's basically, there's no craft except for the setting up and messing around with the images, but the printing itself is automatic, all right? Uh, offset for magazines, the same thing. It's the machine that starts up and starts printing stuff and the manual intervention is minimal. With the computer printer, you know that your only manual intervention is to change the cartridge or unjam the printer, right? But other than that, it's it's automatic. In in this type of the, the Gunther Gershow type prints for this, it's, everything is manual. It's all and there's a constant you know, and you need people actually doing it, making the print. Okay, so this is a, a photograph of uh, Gershaw overlooking um, the printing of, I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, it looks like a, a engra uh, an etching, okay? But, you know, the, the, the people who were specialized in this would know. And you can see that there are two people, uh, you know, getting the piece of paper, getting the piece of paper off the plate. All right. So as you can see, it's very manual. These people are artisans or crafts people. And uh, even though Gershaw was not a printer, you know, he knew what he wanted and he was overlooking the process. This is uh, in Limestone Press in San Francisco in the late 80s or early 90s. Um, Gershaw did several editions in uh, Limestone Press. Um, for example, Sagrario, which is on my website, or Palabras Grabadas, which is done with Octavio Paz, right? And uh, 
and you could well I didn't mention that the prints well the prints uh, you know are bigger than eight and a half by eleven or you know what they call tabloid size uh, in this case the sheets are fairly large sometimes it can go up to 30 inches 30 by 40 inches okay. um, So you can see that this is not the way prints are made, you know, on an everyday basis. I mean, you don't, to print a document, you don't take a sheet of paper, rub it on some mysterious material, and then pull it off, and the next one, and the next one. I mean, this is very automatic. Um, okay. Now, what's another aspect of a Gertrude print, or any, other, or any other artist print for that matter, is the notion of an authentic print. All right, and an authentic print, what does that mean? It means it's a print that's designed or created the image by the artist, uh, in this case, Gershaw. Uh, he, he, he collaborates with the craftspeople to make the prints, the edition, and then, he's, then he, he and the other and the printers select the prints which they consider the best, all right? If you have an edition of, let's say, 25 or 40 prints or 50 or 100, doesn't matter. You probably don't make exactly 100. You make more, and then you select the best ones, and the other ones are discarded, all right? Uh, if, you know, for example, the color didn't quite work right or between different colors, the images didn't coincide. All right, so then they select the, the, the number that, that are considered the best, and then he signs each one, all right? Now, when he signs each one, he is basically saying two things. The first thing is, this is my creation, okay? This is my print. And the second thing he's, he does is, when he signs it, he also numbers it. And he says, not only is this my creation or my print, but this print I approve. It's like a, you know, it's like a seal of approval, you might say. All right, and then he numbers it. So he says, I approve this print, number 11 of 40, or 25 of 59, you know, not just anyone, but this particular one. And that is, that's what is considered an authentic or, or sometimes people call a real print. Right now, what happens to the other ones? Well, theoretically, they should be destroyed. Uh, and, and many times, I mean, I don't know this in practice because I've never really worked with printers, but the idea is that once you finish an edition, you erase or destroy the images on the plates or the or the stone or or take the the, the gunk off the silt screen or whatever, so you can't make any more, right? Uh, now the next question comes up, well, what happens if you find one that's not signed and that you know that it was printed or supervised by Gershow or other, or other artists? Is it authentic? Well, it's sort of authentic, okay? I mean, it's, uh, but the thing is, is that it is, it is, it is just the print, and, but you know, since it's not signed, you don't know the opinion of, of the artist, whether you like it or not. I mean, you know, there are a lot of things that you don't see that they may see or he sees, and he doesn't like it, All right? Now, another aspect of an authentic versus an unsigned print is that as a work of art, it's considered an asset, okay? It retains its value. When it's not signed, since you don't really know if they uh, approved it, then, then it's not an asset, okay? It doesn't retain its value, okay? Okay, I'm gonna show you some prints and there were editions. So the first one here is Chemis, um, out of 1974. It's, uh, you know, 20 by 15 inches, not very big. It's a lithograph, six colors. Okay. Um, this is an etching. Um, it's interesting because it's only one color. 
um, catching aqua tint. Uh, here's another etching, unusual, 1986, not very big, 21 inches by 15. And this is an interesting one, which is uh, a collection of etchings. Um, uh, it's in collaboration with Octavio Paz, the poet. Uh, along with every etching, there's a poem which he wrote. I don't know if he wrote it for this collection, but it's ten. It's uh, the po uh, poems. Oh, well, you have an image, uh, uh, you know, a a print on one side and the poem on the other. And this collection is a big book. Okay. Then these are larger. These are thirty-three by thirty-nine inch uh, prints. These are etchings, and these are a series of them, more or less done at the same time, which is in nineteen ninety-three. Okay, this one is, I had three of these or whatever, and I, I sold them out, Sagrario, also 33 by 39. This one is a unusual image for, for him, and it's also a silk screen. And a silk screen is, you know, like a screen on your, on your door, a screen door, and you put some paper or gunk on it, and for every color, you you know you have kind of a squeegee thing, and you run the ink or the paint across the image. So this one is doesn't say how many colors, but okay. Um, this is mixografia, which is speaking of craft printing. These guys went one step further. They did craft paper. They make their own paper, handmade paper, and then they get the image that my that the Gershaw designed and they make a kind of a mold I guess and then they press the paper in the mold so you get this texture uh, and then and then they put the colors okay they print the colors on so this is 13 colors I use another one um, a mixografia a cinto, um, 95. So basically this, this print is basically more a print of texture because of the micrografia and one color. Okay. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about is the difference between an authentic print, a copy, and a reproduction. And before I begin my comments, I'd like to just mention that I'm not going into any of the legal aspects of, of doing a copy or reproduction. I mean, every country has different rules about what is permissible or not. It's an area of intellectual property, so I'm not gonna get into that. So an authentic print, we know it's a craft print, I'd like to call it that. And a copy, I mean, one way of looking at it is it's trying to produce a craft print as if it, it, in the same way that the original printer uh, that Gunther Gershow used, okay? So if you're a, a sort of a totally purist approach would be to uh, use the same paper, use the machine as close as possible, use the same technique of etching or silk screen or lithograph or whatever and uh, the inks etc okay uh, I suggest that preferably it be a different size than the original and this is good to have the data if you have a copy in hand you have the data of the original uh, that is the image the paper okay uh, so you can tell immediately that it's not the original okay um, of course, it shouldn't be signed. Uh, okay, and uh, now why would anybody do that? Well, you could say, well, there are no more originals available. Okay, and you'd like to have one that's as close as possible to the way it was originally produced. Um, or there, you know, there's uh, 
uh, interest in knowing how to do a print of that type, okay? Maybe you are, you know, interested in, in mastering the craft of this type of print. I mean, that's another thing. Or, you know, you're a teacher of printing, all right? That's another thing. This is how Gunther Gershaw does prints. You know, learn from him. Learn from, you know, everybody else who did it for over several hundred years. Okay. Um, reproduction. Well, reproduction is what we see almost every day, or every day, is you take an, a photograph, you get an image of the original, and you reproduce it, you know, in the newspaper, in a magazine, uh, you know, art books, this kind of stuff. Okay, and um, so the, obviously the quality is varied. It's not a crafty print. It's it's based super automated, uh, and and some of them is incredibly bad quality, and some of it is incredibly good quality, like this. This is a inkjet printer. This is not of a print. Okay, so here we get the words can get confusing. And this is uh, archival paper. It's archival ink. This is not of a Gershaw pr uh, print. This is a Gershaw oil painting called Ocreville de Azul. Okay, now here's a smaller version, eight and a half, eleven. Uh, Hannah Mueller pa uh, paper. Uh, you know, just to touch it, it's absolutely gorgeous. This is properly, you know, framed, and everything will last forever. Okay. Um, so before I go to the website, uh, part of the talk, I'd just like to mention that this is the commercial section, is that uh, what's on the website is uh, some prints that I inherited and or were given to me by my parents. And um, the prints, I got them out of the studio of, of Gershow after he died, and I with my own two hands and I put them in a crate and I brought them to the States. They've been in storage and I would like to sell them, uh, you know, fair market value. Um, people say, well, why do you want to sell it? And I said, well, I have eight signed numbered chemists or seven or, you know, something like that. And I'm not going to put all seven or eight on my wall. I only want one. I really like it, but I only want one. So the rest are, you know, available. And what I what we reco what I recovered, uh, and that was, you know, 20, 21 years ago, uh, is uh, two percent of the total production. So what is on the website is only eight or nine. Um, I think it's eight uh, uh, prints of eight of eight. Uh, Eight, uh, uh, eight uh, uh, prints of eight editions, okay? And uh, it's only 2% of the total production. And there was 100 editions, okay? So um, the thing is, I'm not, as I, I'm not in the art business. I'm not a gallery. So whatever is eventually sold, there, that's, that's it. That will be the end uh, of at least what I have. I, I'm not going to receive any more in inventory. Uh, at least as far as I know, okay? Um, I will be putting up other new uh, stuff that I have on the website. So they have been selling um, slowly, but they're, you know, being sold. Okay, so the next is the website. Take number 4,000. All right, this is the website. Uh, home page of the website I set up for my father. It's www.guntergershow.com, as I mentioned before. If you don't, you know, like doing URLs to Google. And this is the home page. So to see the prints, you go to store, prints. Okay, I did that really quick. Store. So you go to store. You'll see prints. Up in the menu, there's prints too. Do prints. And then there's eight prints here. Okay, um, so just an example. There's this mixografia done, uh, 19, what is it? Um, 95, all right? 
Uh, so you can see all the data. Uh, there's several here in stock, but also the mixer that a few people have some in stock. And I've, you know, I've talked to them uh, relatively recently, and they're, they're good guys, uh, good people. And, and you can see the print data, the 13, 13 ink made on paper, the size of the paper, handmade paper. There's 75 in the edition. So again, it's limited edition, limited production craft printing, small batches, all right? Seven artist proof numbered, and it's in Roman numerals. Seven HC, I can't remember what that is. One Bonatire, okay? Um, so then there's Gemes, Gemes, the same kind of thing, all right? Um, so to know about an edition, you have to know that. All right, everybody, so that's that's it. Um, I hope this helps. Um, you can you know there's the contact email at the bottom on the web page, which is jmgershow.art at earthlink.net. Thank you.